Everything's in order, sir. Spit and polish, sir. I hope you slip and break your neck, sir. I wish you were Spencer Barney's head. Hello, Bright Eyes. What are you so damn cheerful about? Well, I don't know, everything in general. This is a good life, Nora. I mean, here we are, uh, living in a real nice home, easy job, the boss's cigars, ditto, the boss's whiskey, and a pretty girl to come home to in the evening. Huh? Combination hard to beat, right? Yeah, it sounds just great, except for one thing. Uh-oh, what's that? Spencer. Oh, come on, the two of you feuding again? He hates me, and the feeling is mutual. Well, just ignore the guy. I'm gonna get a lock of his hair and make a Spencer Barney doll and stick pins in it. <laughs> uh, somehow I don't think Spencer would let you too close to him with a pair of scissors. You know what he did to me? He forced me, forced me to wax that foyer, and then he stood there and he watched me with that stupid smile on his face, enjoying every minute of it. Oh, uh, Nora, don't get so steamed up. I mean, uh, it wasn't such a tough chore, was it? That's not the point. The point is that I was forced to do a menial job that should be done by a housemaid, not a housekeeper. And he just loves humiliating me. Oh, uh, doggone. There I go walking across the floor, mud all over my boots, huh? That's not funny! <laughs> oh, Nora, come on, don't get so mad. Hey, come on, we'll find a solution for it, okay? Yeah, we can poison his coffee. <laughs> well, that's not what I mean. Uh, I tell you what. You can always quit. We could, we could both quit. We could both give notice. Come on, are you kidding? I couldn't find a good job like this, not in a million years. No way. I'm making him pay for this. I swear I will. Yeah, well, I know what you're waiting for, baby. You're waiting for Mr. Whitney to marry Raven Alexander, and then Raven will come here and fire Spencer, right? Well, don't hold your breath, because Whitney would... Gunther, bring the car around front, will you? I've got to go to WMON. I also have somebody waiting for me at the coach house. Right. <clears throat> coach house, huh? Uh, I hope it's not uh, Valerie Bryson. I hope so, too. See you later, okay? Your table, Mr. Deborah. Is this all right, Raven? Oh, this is wonderful. I'm expecting another guest, Mr. Skyler Whitney. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, would you care for a drink while you're waiting, Raven? Let's wait for Sky. Oh, he called just before I left the house. He said to be right over. Good. You know what? Why don't I go to the ladies' room and wait there, and that way I'll really surprise him. I hope he won't be too surprised when he finds out this is a dinner for three. Oh, don't worry. He's gonna love it. Good evening, sir. Good to see you outside the office. How's Nancy? What's she up to? Creating in the kitchen. Ah, as only she can. I'm in luck tonight. <laughs> Drink? Yeah, you bet. Scotch? Water? Derek, hello. I'm so glad you could join us. Oh, mm. I was just telling Mike how lucky I am to be here. Oh, great. Sit down. From what I can gather, uh, you are due a little relaxation. Excuse me, honey. Mike tells me that things have been uh, pretty hectic around your department these days. Yeah, it sure has been. I've I had to juggle all my personnel around just to cope with the extra load. And this search for George Foley? Among other things, yes. Well, it's bizarre, isn't it? I mean, Raven being abducted the way she was by a man who's masquerading as someone else. It's a weird coincidence, almost duplicating what she went through before. Mm. What's the latest? Well, she's all right. I'm sure she was scared out of her wits, assuming she has any, but uh, I don't think she suffered any real ill effects. She can thank her lucky stars. I think this one uh, came closer to disaster than anyone realized. Nancy, I'd like to thank you for the way the press has handled this. It's particularly important right now. 
Well, Mike did stress the importance of discretion. Besides, I think that you can count on all the media. Even the Monticello Star is cooperating. <laughs> that says a lot. I just hope that Raven herself is being discreet. Yeah, Raven does have more than a slight tendency towards self-advertisement. Maybe I should talk to her, tell her to keep this quiet. I really don't think you have to worry about it at all. I, I, I really do believe she would rather forget the whole incident. Yes, it does make her look rather foolish to have been taken in like that a second time. And she wasn't the only one to be fooled by George Foley, but... Uh... Nancy, again, you were the one to first raise questions about him. Here's to a very smart lady. I will drink to that. <laughs> Are you any closer to finding a man? No. No, we're not. Got a lot of men working on it. We're going to get a break soon. I know it. Okay. Well, not to add to your frustrations, I will take care of the dinner. <laughs> okay. Derek, I do have some further information, and I uh, think this is a good time to discuss it with you. It'll help you tie some loose ends together. Great. What is it? Well, I have to preface it uh, with the fact that it's ultra-confidential. Although I do have David Cameron's blessing to share this with you. He hopes it will help you in your search for Foley. Or at least inspire you to greater efforts once you understand its importance. Well, Mike, tell me. Cameron is convinced that Foley knows about the existence of a document named the phone book. Yes, the phone book. Mike. What is this phone book? It's an informal, intra-office name for the complete list of United States undercover agents operating all over the world. Mike, are you telling me a book like this is on the loose? That's what they're afraid of. Cameron says there are only three people in the entire country who are even allowed to look at that list. You know what this means if this book got into the wrong hands? It's obvious what the consequences would be if it were traded off to anyone unfriendly. Mike, what you're saying could spell disaster. That's exactly what it means. Can we pick up line six, please? I'm late. Ah, it's my fault. I know, you insisted on that second dessert, oh, sheer glutton. I won't tell if you don't. You're going to have to tell my boss if she notices that I'm late. Why? She yell and scream, will she? No, no, that's not Geraldine's style, but anyone in this studio will tell you that her silences are far more damning. Well, she doesn't scare me. Me either. <laughs> Good heavens, what are you two conspiring about? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I was just telling Nicole that you don't scare me worth a nickel. Well, I'm sure I don't know why I should be here or anyone else for that matter. It's because I'm a little late, and it's Miles' fault because he had two desserts oh, at dinner. You snitch. Well, you're not that late, anyway. I was hoping Jody might stop by with you this evening. A couple of things I wanted to talk to her about related to the children's show. But above that, I'm anxious to get her back on the job. No, she's staying at home tonight. She's resting, trying to recover from the traumatic experience of the Eden Festival. But she's all right, isn't she? Oh, she's going to be fine. She's going to take her a little time to kind of come to grips with all that happened. But she's a very resilient young woman, and she's going to be able to put it behind her very quickly. I think she'll feel better, too. Get all that behind her when she gets back to work. Speaking of that, you ladies have to work, and I should let you alone. I'll right. see you later. Miles, and before you go, there is something I would like to say that both of you should hear. Well, sure. What's that? Why don't you let me tell them, Geraldine? Scholar, hello. Nicole, doctor. Surprised to see you here. Are you letting your aunt give you the grand tour? Well, no, but uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to be touring this place quite a bit in the future. Oh, really? How's that? Well, as it turns out, I've worked out a deal, finally, with your sister, Doctor. She's agreed to sell me WMON News. Thanks to the kind intercession of my dear aunt. Well, yes, Geraldine did mention that you were interested in buying the studio. I certainly knew that uh, April felt it had kind of become an albatross with her living so far away. Well, uh, congratulations and wish you luck with it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Of course, the deal isn't all the way through yet. I mean, we've still got to deal with the FCC and such, but uh, I'd say the deal is just about a foregone conclusion. Well, this is a fine state of affairs, isn't it? Imagine having a young, squeaky nephew for a boss. Oh, I shudder at the thought. Now, Geraldine, you know that I am the first person to admit my ignorance of the whole production of television. Yeah, sure, there's a lot to learn. I... I've always found it incomprehensible. Well, I will too, for a while anyway. But Geraldine has very generously offered to permit me to follow her around so that I can unravel the mysteries of television. I don't mind your following me around, Scarter. Just don't get in my way. That's all I ask. I won't. I promise. Besides, my main interest is going to be in the news. 
And since, Mrs. Kavanaugh, you are the head of the news department, you can be my mentor. Well, why not? Is the world going to come to an end if I help myself to a little Whitney brandy? I suppose you feel you deserve a drink after all the housework you've done today. I, I, I was just uh, filling up a decanter. Funny, I thought you were emptying it. Unless my memory fails me, I've seen you help yourself from time to time. Perhaps, but from time to time, I replace it, Nora. A tower of integrity, I didn't aren't come you? here to get into an argument with you, Nora. I came to tell you that I'm leaving for the evening. That leaves you in charge of the house. Please try to manage that without a crisis. Haven't you picked on me enough today? Now, listen. I didn't want you in this house from the beginning. You are here on Mr. Whitney's whim and sufferance, but I can change all of that very quickly. Just try to remember where and who you are. Oh, I know. I'm nothing but a housekeeper. And you're so hateful, you won't even let me do that job well. Meaning what, Nora? You promised me a full set of keys. Everyone's always telling me how efficient you are. The keys, yes. I apologize, but the locksmith just brought them in today. You might check through them to see if they're all here, but please try to fight off the urge to use the key to the wine room. Master bedroom, blue guest bedroom, garage, wine cellar, study, downstairs, bedroom, front. Spencer's room. When you're baking something, mm. when you're roasting something good, it lets a natural flavor through. If you thought about Pam, you can use it on a grill, you can put it on a mold. When you're frying, it's a thrill. If you thought about Pam, when you're watching out for fat, when you're eating like you should, it'll help you look like that. Or you should think about Pam, there's none of this or that. When you're cleaning up your pans, you get it done in no time. Okay, Mitzi, come on now. We've got a little break here. Why don't you give me all the details of what happened at the photo studio yesterday? Because so far you have only skimmed the surface. I said, I really don't know what happened. I mean, it all happened so fast. But I'll tell you one thing. It was real weird. <laughs> Everything that happens with you is weird. So, what? were you doing at Val's studio in the first place? You see, I went to her studio because I heard she was taking pictures of some big celebrity. What celebrity? You see, I didn't know. Everyone was being so mysterious about it. I mean, that's why I went to the studio in the first place, is because I was dying to find out who it was. Don't you know that curiosity killed a cat? It did. Lucy, I'm so sorry. Well, anyways, I went to the studio, and there was this man, and there was this woman, and neither one of them was a celebrity. I mean, they were just ordinary people. Imagine that. Okay, well, these people who weren't celebrities were attacking Valerie. I mean, they were physically attacking her. What on earth for? Did you call the police? Valerie got in touch with them. They came over. And uh, it must have been something real big, because not only did the chief of police come over, but the district attorney and some other guy. Well, what happened to the people who uh, weren't celebrities? They made a run for it. They got away. I, mean, I have no idea what the whole thing was about. Oh, my gosh. What? Table seven. They, they were asking about their corned beef hash. Mitzi, you didn't order any corned beef hash. I guess I forgot. <laughs> I guess you're a little shaky. doing here? Well, this is a restaurant, isn't it? Yeah. And you serve food, right? Yeah, I guess so. Well, that's, uh, that's what I want, some food. Okay. <laughs> Hi, honey. Ah, thank you. Oh, oh uh, wait a minute. Uh, listen, I... You won't believe this, but I, I forgot to bring my glasses, and I, I can't see a thing without them. I, I was wondering if you might read the menu for me, huh? Pretty please? Sugar and honey on it. <laughs> oh. 
Friends in broil, New York sirloin, lamb chops, veal scallopini, roast beef, hash, beef stew, fried shrimp, scallops, brook trout, spaghetti and meatballs, spaghetti and clam sauce, lasagna, beans. <laughs> you know, you are so cute when you read. Well, I'll tell you what, I think I'll have the, uh, the London broil, the fried shrimp, lasagna, french fries, salad, cheesecake, and coffee. Uh, no cream. I, uh, gotta watch, uh, calories. Are you really gonna eat all that? Hey, you know, you'd be surprised how much I can eat, little girl. <laughs> Ian, I'm so sorry I'm late. That's perfectly all right, my friend. It hasn't dampened my enthusiasm for seeing you. Can I bring you a drink? Well, yes, a uh, scotch in the rocks would be nice, thank you. Okay. I had to stop by a television station, and I'm afraid I got delayed a little bit. How come? Don't tell me you're going to be appearing on television. Am I dining with a TV personality? <laughs> No, no. All my business is going to be, unfortunately, on the other side of the camera. I've decided to buy the station. That's great, Sky. Congratulations. Thank you. It should be interesting. It sounds like a damn good investment. I'm glad to see you using your money constructively. I can remember a time when, as teenagers, we used to sit in the basement of the Devereux house, deciding what we were going to do with our lives. As I recall, the only thing that you were going to do with the Whitney fortune was to buy a hundred thousand dollar sports car. <laughs> I remember that promise. And I did, in fact. But I decided that they were more important playthings to have in one's life, such as a power tool, a TV station, as much that sort of a plaything. It's very important to me now. But it's a lot of catching up to do. What about yourself, Ian? You may recall that my dreams were somewhat more modest than yours, since I didn't have a family fortune to look forward to when I came of age. But I used what there was, and I suppose I've done all right. I made money abroad. Lots of it, in fact. Oil futures, that kind of thing. But so what? You can only buy one suit at a time, and you can only drive one car at a time. And anyway, I've tired of being an expatriate. I've decided that my days of roaming the world are over. In fact, I'm thinking of settling down here for good. No news could make me happier than that. I'm very happy to hear that, Ian. You may or may not have heard that I had some difficulty myself in getting my inheritance. It was held from me for a while. But that's a story for another time. I, too, decided that I needed some more in my life, a career, a purpose and a very good friend and what about a wife well i must admit that that idea has crossed my mind and it's crossed my mind as well there was something i forgot to mention i've invited someone <laughs> surprised to see me, aren't you? Yes, I suppose you can say that. <laughs> oh, this is wonderful. Just the three of us. Two of the most devastatingly handsome men in Monticello. And me. Spencer Barney. 